Welcome to Eucanic. Today here in Eucanic, we have a 2020 Honda Civic here. It has the 1.5 liter turbo motor. Um, but we are going to go over how you replace your radiator. If your radiator is cracked or broken, you need to replace it because it's leaking this fluid out or it's not working as efficient. So to start with, this vehicle is raised up and supported on jack stands. It just gives you a little bit extra space. It is under, there's a few bolts and screws you may need to, you'll need to remove under the bottom. And also so you can move the tires to turn them right and left to be able to get some bolts out of the, um, the wheel well or the screws there to hold it in. So to start with, um, we've got it raised up. We've got the hood open to gain access to some uh, push clips that are up in the top to be able to remove those and to get ready. Then we can go down around the sides. So up here on the top, we're gonna have a good amount of various um, push clips to remove. And so we've got one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that just gets this little component up of this plastic piece and we can remove and set that to the side and set it behind us and so we set that over there and then once you've removed those then you would have one that's right here one that's in the center it's um right now i just have it in there but we have one that's in the center here that you would remove with this uh um, piece of the rubber molding and then another one that's right here on this side and that gets that component off and you'll do this on both sides. You have one push pin up here that you need to remove, and then that gets that free. And then um, you don't need to remove the other push pins here, unless you really want to. But we get this free, and then you want to pull on this, this piece of plastic here. I do that on both sides to be able to get this to um, come free. Alright, so if right here you pop this rubber up a little bit, there is a, an opening here where you can depress the little clip by pressing down on it. And what you're doing is you're pushing this clip down to be able to pull it out. Right, and now um, you can remove this and you remove the one on the other side because it's going to be, um, you could leave it attached if you would like to, but it comes that it's sticking out here and you have a bigger per chance of breaking it off than uh, when you're removing the whole bumper itself. So we're gonna do that same concept to the other side and take that piece off and then we'll be even closer. So again, we have this. Now this one is just, has been just sitting on here, but the same thing, you would just remove this tab a little bit and you'll see I uh, have a hole here to depress that little tab and it would be the same right down here. So like that you could remove this, but you just need to move the little rubber around. And now, be able to pull this plastic and set that aside. And now we have most of the top all free. I'm going to leave that one push pin right here in the middle, or we leave something here just to hold the middle of the bumper up while we remove the side components and the under portion. So this is going to work on both sides. Um, we have a screw here and another screw right here that um, this one would be a push pin a screw to attach to the, um, the the wheel well. This one is missing the wheel well. And so we have the one screw up here and then where the bottom of the bumper comes into the bottom of the wheel well, there will be some uh, bolts and or push pins. Um, I can't give you complete on that because that portion was never here so I don't know. So to remove that screw, it's just a fill up. And this is why it's good to have the uh, vehicle raised up a little bit. That way you can turn the steering wheel to gain better access to the screws that you may need to remove here. So we removed that one screw, and now this bumper, this side, will be able to come undone. So you can do the same on the other side, and that way you'll be able to free the bumper from the vehicle. Now. Under the bottom, and I've already done that, but there's going to be a various amounts of push pins and or um, uh, there's these bolts that go down there. And they're a 10 millimeter bolt with a little shoulder piece so that they don't over tighten on the, uh, the rubber there. And there will be um, some of these that are down there that are attaching to the uh, under frame, the splash shield, 
and the um, the wheel well liner also. So you remove those from the bottom side, and now you'll be able to start removing the bumper. So once you, you've done that, to be able to get the bumper to come off, you need to grab over here and be able to pull on the bumper, and that unclips it from the side, and then there's a little bit of uh, some clips here that attach to the lights themselves, and then it'll pull back. Now, if you had fog lights, uh, this one doesn't, but if you had the fog lights, you would also need to be unhooking the electric that goes to the fog light. And I left this one push pin in here, it still will. I'm gonna do the same on this side, to open up this side, and then I'll remove that push pin, and we'll be able to pull the whole bumper up. So we see the bumper is uh, it's free, it's just holding on by this one little um, push clip. So we'll remove that. Supporting our bumper up so it doesn't just fall on the ground. And now to be able to grab and pull and remove the bumper from our vehicle and then we can set that down. The uh, bumper, remove the front bumper, that comes in handy too, gives you enough space to access these um, bolts here. You got two on this side, two on that side. That's for the AC condenser. We're not going to undo the AC system itself, but we are going to undo the condenser from the radiator so that we can pull that away to be able to pull the radiator out. Then we also have two bolts, or four bolts on the back that we remove from the fan. Uh, the fan housing that's bolted to the radiator, a couple electrical components, and the upper and lower radiator hoses that we will need to remove. Done. So once you've raised the vehicle, you've gone through the process of removing the bumper, and to make it easier for you, then this cover we're just sitting here to show what to the top of the radiator. Um, you only need to undo these two bolts, and then your radiator will be able to pull forward, and you may be able, depending on how you like to work on your vehicle, then you'll be able to reach back in here and get the other things undone. But to make it a bit easier for yourself, uh, it's very simple to remove this um, component here, and so there are some, there are two bolts here that hold a, another bracket that sits here. So you undo those bolts, and then that bracket opens. And then you have four bolts here. These are number, um, they're size 12 millimeter bolts. Four on this side, four on the uh, opposite side. So once you can remove those, and then on this side, the, the cooling line that comes in, you'll just need to squeeze these tabs together and pull it out of the bracket and fold it there. And then there's another clamp on the back, and we can get that one off. And then same thing, we have this uh, high side for our AC system. It has the same kind of bracket, you want to pull that off. And once you've got that pulled off, then you'll be able to move this up to make it a little bit easier. For a little easier movement, there is a, uh, a clamp right down here of the electric. Follow this electric line that runs along here. Comes to the... Uh, uh, safety latch here, but you can follow that electric line, but you can just free This retaining clip to give you a little bit more space when you remove this And so now you'll be able to just pop this up. Like I said, there is that hose that's Stuck to it to speed that up. Then you can pop this up and be able to Move and set that to the side and now we have a lot better access To our radiator to be able to get the components off of it that we need to now, before we go ahead and remove a whole lot, let's start the process of draining the rest of the coolant, if there is any coolant still left in there, so that we don't make a, a big mess. Depending if you still have your shield, um, splash shield, you would remove that splash shield. And then right up in here is the, uh, the drain for your um, engine coolant. It's just a little plastic knob, we spin it, and then we catch our coolant that may or may not be in here. It doesn't seem to be very, uh, really any at all. But, that's how you would drain it if you need to drain it in general for any other purpose also. Okay, so while that's draining, we can go ahead and which is just a squeeze clamp, a pair of pliers, take two of that. Same thing, we've got the uh, upper radiator hose. We can undo that while we're here. Okay, 
Okay, we've got the upper Euphrates hoses and done. That's a good start there. Um, and then we'll undo these four bolts. We'll undo these uh, four bolts. These are size 10. One, uh, two on each side. That way this is the, uh, the AC condenser and it can set back to the side here. So there was a pressure sensor connection, uh, electric connection up to that. We also have the electric connection for the uh, temperature sensor into the radiator. We're going to do that. And then we need to get the lower radiator hose undone. And then we have another four bolts on the back to undo. Get the fan shroud separated from the radiator. And then we should be able to just pull the radiator out. So straight down on this side, down below, is got a clamp just Exactly like this one. So I'm going to go down there, unhook that, and then we'll be able to remove the other four bolts. And with removing this craft bar here, then you have easier access to just remove all the bolts from up top here. And then we can pull the radiator out. And we'll take the sensor off of here and put in our new radiator, or you can put a new sensor in your new radiator, and then you'll be able to, to put it back in. Now, when you do this part, when you bring the, the coolant, you still may get a little bit that comes out. Okay, got the lower uh, hose unhooked. Now we just have the four bolts on the back here of the fan, and we'll be able to just pull the radiator up now. So if you pull your radiator a bit forward, it gives you some more space. And like I said, we just have the, the four bolts on there. Four bolts removed from the fan side, and now we'll be able to just kind of shift this fan unit back. Then we have our AC condenser shifted, and be able to just. Oh, I left an electric line connected over here. Okay, and now we should just be able to just pull it up. couple little snags in there but it was able to come out and so like I said now the one thing is we'll take the sensor off of this one and put onto the new one and then we'll be right ready to slide the new one in um, we've removed the old radiator uh, with one method and now we're gonna go ahead and put a new one in you're gonna to want to double check you know put them side by side and make sure that everything looks um, that it's in the right orientation in the same order everything here looks the same we do need to take this sensor and move it over to here. This is just a plug that the manufacturer puts in there. And so we're just going to remove that. You would either put a new sensor or just transfer your old one from your old um, unit. Needs to be. This is a size 17 on this one to loosen it and to remove. Always a uh, pretty good practice to replace your O-ring. If you have, I mean, if there was no size leak, it should be just fine on that. But if you can, just remove this old one and get a new one and put it on. Right. So we found a new O-ring, and just put it on. And now we'll be able to put this into our new radiator. And we're just making this snug. It doesn't need to be crazy. That's why we've got the O-ring to help make sure it all seals up. Set that old one aside and be able to drop this one in. We've got our radiator prepped and ready. We can install it now and then put all the connections back up. You may have opted to take this out with a, a fan uh, attached to it. Uh, there's not a, not a problem with doing that either. Um, we did it without doing that. We just had enough space. Always more than one way to do it. Now we're going to do our best to get this to slide on in here. Without a whole lot of hang-ups.
Okay, it's sitting in there. Now I'm going to bring up the fan and line it up and put our four, four bolts in. I'm going to stock them and then we can tighten the uh, bolts to hold the fan on. Okay, we got those four started. Um, we can uh, also go ahead and get the uh, four to hold this uh, condenser on. Right, got all those uh, um, started. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the, the four bolts hold the fan to the radiator, four bolts that hold the condenser on. Okay, we have uh, all the eight bolts tightened. The four for the fan, four for the uh, for the condenser. So you just want to uh, now hook up your uh, your water lines, the uh, upper radiator water line, and then you'll get the lower one, and then this little uh, line. Okay, so we have the upper. The two on this upper side, um, go down to the bottom, uh, put the one from the bottom, and uh, make sure you do that. And then um, we've got the electric connectors to hook up on this side, one for the sensor, for the, um, the AC. And then we have one for the sensor, your temperature sensor, and on that side. And then when you're done with all that, you'll want to make sure, I mean, if that's everything that you're doing here, then you can put this back in place. Once you get that back into place, you will have some rubber grommets that were on the other of your old radiator that you'll transfer to the top here um, before you tighten everything down and clamp that down because that also helps you hold your radiator into place. But anyway, so you'll do that and then just put everything back where it goes, put your bumper back on, and then last is that you'll need to fill your radiator up with coolant and this is your radiator reservoir. And this is the only place where you put your antifreeze into this vehicle. And so you'll open this and pour in the antifreeze that's equivalent to your vehicle. Um, this had a blue, and so I like to match it with a blue coolant to, to fill that up. And so you'll just keep pouring in here until it fills up and then run the vehicle. And then uh, fill it up to the line on the side that says the max line. And you'll be good to go. That's we it. are ready to install our front bumper. And so to start with, we'll need to bring our front bumper to the vehicle and the bumper was you know it's you remember to have to do anything on the front here especially if you need to replace your headlight assemblies is one of the big reasons why your bumper would have been so now we are going to put it back on um, for replacement so you need to bring it up Set it here, whether you use a screwdriver or uh, one of the push pins, just to hold the top in so that it doesn't fall down while you go around and maneuver the pieces where they need to be. There's a little shield piece down there that's to you know, direct the air through the uh, front mount intercooler, and so I had to move that a little bit on the front to be able to get that down. So you'll do this process on both sides and be able to get this up over this big clip here. And then I'm gonna line this up onto the light there. Okay, so we have that uh, down through the, the rim here around the light where it needs to go and then 
Um, we have this lined up in the little channel grooves here, and we just press and stamp it in place. Um, this light you would need to put on. I'm missing it. That's setting there. Uh, there's one uh, Phillips screw that holds this on over here. One Phillips screw that holds it on at the top. There'll be another uh, push pin or screw that goes into the fender well or the fender, the inner liner, and that inner liner's not there. So. So we've done that on this side. You need to just repeat that same process on the other side. Bring our bumper off. Okay, just get it to go around the light and situate in there. And then be able to line this up on this side with the tab. There we go. And then you got the one fill up screw that you would need to put in on this side. We have a various amount of um, bolts and um, screws that would go on the bottom to hold that to the splash shield and to the vehicle on the bottom. So I will uh, do that. And that's one good reason why you'd have your car kind of raised up a little bit and, of course, supported on jack stance. The other thing we want to get is we have still a little bit of piece of uh, plastic here and that. Um, rubber molding to put on, so we'll do that. Okay, so we've got this uh, plastic trim here. And it's going to go on both sides. And we'll start from this side. We line it up just on top of the light, line it up, and then just press it to lock the clips. We'll have one push pin that's going to go right there to lock that piece on, and then this sits down here. And this, we can put this push pin in here, and then we'll move and do the other side, and then we can put this piece on, the plastic piece that goes here, and put that push pin in there. Okay, so we got that uh, aligned around the uh, um, the light here. Just had to reset this portion of the bottom bumper to sit in there better. And then we have the stop one pressed in, and it's pressed in and locked in there. And so next we have there'll be one push pin that'll go up up top there, and we have the one push pin put in right here. So that secures the top of the bumper portion right there. And to do our final, we're going to put this piece on and put the push the put the remainder of the push pins in. So we've got one more that goes down through that little uh, rubber cover right through the bumper and holds it on. Right there. And then we have nine that attach through here to hold this on. And the bumper in the bottom. Okay, so we have all the, the push pins in. We have them all but this one we push in. And that one I gotta go find one. And two push pins on the outside wings of the, the headlights there. And then, uh, like I said, some uh, some bolts and push pins under the bumper down here attached to the vehicle to be able to keep that front of the bumper on. And that's how you would replace your front bumper on your 2020 Honda Civic. Thanks for watching Mechanic. Where you can be the